Welcome to the Substitute for War NBA Draft video for Jared Sullinger um, from Ohio State. He is currently projected as a top 10 pick in this year's NBA Draft. Alright, here's some clips of him. I'm going to show some of his scoring ability. His standout trait in the NBA is he has great touch around the basket and he has great sense of which angles to release at and his feel in general for playing off his back to the basket and around the rim is really, really, really good. Uh, one thing I like about Jared Sullinger is that he has a great pace to his game and he always seems to have a lot of time. Um, I tend to think of this as coming from a player's uh, feel for the game and his basketball instincts. Uh, Sullinger never really has to rush his shots and he always seems to know uh, always seems to be aware of the court around him quite well. So, I don't think Solinger has the most advanced moves of any post player. Right now, um, the way he gets his game off is more power and feel and touch. And here's again against Michigan. Uh, the games I uploaded were this game against Michigan, a game against Indiana fairly early in the year, and the final four loss to Kansas in the tournament. And as, as you can see, like a lot of uh, post players, when he's leaning towards the basket, that's usually when his best shots come. As it, his power lets him get a better shot and lets him draw contact. And here's against, Je against Jeff Whiffy where he was criticized because he struggled. As you're gonna see, he ends up taking some fadeaway jump shots because with his size advantage over him, um, makes it hard for Solinger to gain uh, position on him, and therefore he kind of takes his low percentage shots. And here he is again, he's gonna end up taking a uh, fadeaway jump shot. Mainly in the NBA, the concern is that against players who are so strong he's not going to be able to get position well and he's going to have to take a lot of more of these jump shots. Um, here again is an issue because he's kind of at a vertical disadvantage when he goes up the score like that it's not always successful and he could get his shot blocked a lot in the NBA as what he's doing right now. That's kind of uh, the scariest killer for Solinger in this video. And now I'm going to show you some passing. I was very impressed by Solinger's passing because I think a lot of it stems from, again, just the pace he plays at and he seems like he has a lot of time, so he kind of calmly finds uh, open men off the double teams very well. And it's always nice for a big man because then teams will hesitate to double him and that'll get him better shots. And then you can run some inside out offense. And here's some more passing. He's going to do a give and go here. There you go. And this is probably my favorite pass of him in the video. He goes over the top. And that was a really nice one. Finally, this is like a dirt pass. That's a nice one too. Outside in. Um, I'm going to show you some shooting now. Solinger has a jump shot, but the games I saw, he didn't make one. This is something that's going to be really important for him in the NBA because where that'll open up his game a lot. And if he transitions to playing a face-up game, you really need to have that jump shot. And that'll allow him to drive to the basket more as well. And um, he can model his game a bit after like guys like David West and Carlos Boozer, who the jump shots allow them to score a lot. Okay, this is Solinger uh, setting screens, which I thought he needs to improve on a lot. As you can see, screens are kind of the more like slip screens, which are kind of like fake screens, and then the roller just kind of goes early. And generally, um, Solinger's screens just seem kind of soft and, and effective. And as you can see here, he's going to get a bad shot because the, they didn't really get their offense going. And here's another video of screens. Uh, Again, you'll see he kind of just kind of sets a pick, but he doesn't really do anything. And Solinger just has to um, hold his screens longer and harder on his defenders. And here we go again. 
kind of a soft screen, and the defender catches up to him. Um, this is a successful pick and roll play. That's something again that he'll need to work on using a lot more in the NBA if he becomes more of a face-up type of player. Um, this is some defense. Solinger is in the middle there, and I was uh, pretty impressed by his defense because his awareness seemed uh, really good, and he always kept track track of the play. And it's an unflashy type of defense, but it's pretty effective. And as you can see, he gets out on the perimeter here, then he comes back. And then he notices the player's driving, and he comes over and he stops him. And those are the kind of plays that can help teams a lot. Um, here it is again, defensively. And he's on the man there, and then he goes back, and then he sees the butt guy driving and steal. So that's just all awareness, essentially. And here he is on the perimeter, uh, hedging. And I thought his quickness defensively on the perimeter was pretty good, and should translate to the NBA pretty well. And here he is hedging again. Um, he's going to stop this perimeter player on multiple occasions. See, that guy tries to drive there. And then he tries to drive again, and Sullinger's there. So that was kind of all him defensively. Uh, here's some man defense against Cody Zeller, who's projected to be a top 10 pick in 2013. Um, Zeller played pretty well in this game, but here Sullinger does a good job on him. There you go. And here's the, uh, he's getting in this player's grill. You don't see him doing stuff like that often, but good uh, good toughness there. Uh, this is a concern of Solinger. As you can see, when uh, Zeller drives in, he just doesn't have the length to block him. And is really in a vulnerable position. And same thing here. It just comes down to uh, being at a vertical disadvantage somewhat. It's not just the length as much as he can't really get up that well either. Uh, here's his rebounding. I think it could be a concern in the NBA, even though his numbers are very good in Ohio, because it seems like he rebounds of his hands, but again, vertically, he doesn't cover a lot of air, and uh, he's not great at blocking out. Uh, it could be a concern that his numbers at Ohio are helped by the fact that Deshaun Thomas is a three-point shooting outside power forward, who therefore most of the rebounds uh, belong to Solinger, so um, it's something to worry about. Uh, sometimes it just seemed like Sullinger wasn't quite hungry enough on the boards. As you saw in that last play, uh, he just didn't really want that one very much. And likewise here, just kind of nonchalant, keeps his hands down, Zeller gets the offensive rebound. That's something that, again, I think when players mature, they can do that more often. Um, again here, he has foul trouble, so he, that's slightly excusable, but he still kind of takes that play off. And here's an offensive play, and you'll see that Solinger has his hands on his hips. And then he's not really ready for the play that much. And then when he gets it, he's in an awkward position and uh, turns it over. So that's just something that you have to work on the competitiveness to uh, be locked in all the time. Sometimes it was a bit lax. Um, this is just clips that I showed before. I'm going to play them while I give my uh, final thoughts on Solinger. I think he's a pretty good prospect. I think he's going to be a starting uh, power forward in the NBA because... He's got good athletic tools, uh, skill around the basket and basketball IQ, uh, which are obviously the three most important things. And if you can score around the rim and you make good decisions, you should be able to be um, a usable offensive option in the NBA. I think his worst case scenario is probably uh, Carl, Landry, Carl Landry, who can score around the rim, but because he's at a vertical disadvantage, has some problem on the boards and defensively. But... Uh, I could see Sullinger statistically, uh, his points and rebounds, maybe he could get up to like a Paul Millsap type of level, maybe like uh, David West, but both those players are really good jump shooters, so that's something Sullinger has to develop, has to work hard, and um, I think he'd have a unique game from those guys, but just in terms of the numbers. As I said, I could see him being more of a face-up player in the NBA, and using his quickness and his touch and his feel to still get a lot of points. Just because with his back to the basket, uh, I don't know if he has the strength to really overpower players like he does in college. And I don't know if his moves are quite advanced enough to make up for it. So that's uh, Jared Sullinger, a prospect I like a lot. Um, so I'll try to get some more videos up in the next couple of weeks. Um, visit a substitute for war if you haven't already. Uh, uh, thanks for watching.